Hey, Kevin, what do you have there? Hey, uh, the guy in the brown uniform was here not too long ago, and he brought me a new toy, a tool for Christmas. It's the third generation AHP Alpha TIG 200X TIG welder. And you're thinking, now, wait a minute, I got one out in the garage. It looks just like that. What's the difference? <laughs> Come here, let me show you. So along with some upgrades to the circuitry inside, you know, a little heavier components, you know, a little bigger wiring, you know, bigger transformers, I don't know, I don't know what they did in there, but I was told it's, it's got some more heft to it and even weighs a little bit more. Uh, the biggest difference you aluminum guys are going to notice is right out here on the control panel. So just a redesign on the panel, really, you know, your, your TIG or stick welder switch, your DC or AC switch, 2T, 4T, and then no pulse or pulse. On the top row, you've got your starting amps, your main amps, or your pulse peak, your ending amps, your pulse frequency, your pulse amps or the pulse base, and the pulse time on. But this is the big thing you aluminum guys are going to love right here, is the new model, you can adjust the AC frequency on it now. And then the AC balance and the post flow. And then just a few changes right here on the front, you'll notice. You know, instead of that uh, screw on nut that went on to a fitting that was hot, electrically. You had that little plastic cover that went over it to keep yourself from getting shocked. Now it's got an enclosed DINs connector. The gas line hooks up with a quick disconnect right here on the front of the machine. Instead of having a barb or, you know, uh, you know some other kind of connector, now it's a little quick disconnect here. And then just a, your connection for either your torch trigger switch or a single connection for your uh, foot pedal instead of the old model that had two connections for it, and then just your ground connection. And of course the, the, um, the on-off switch you know, is still located on the back, you know, in the back left-hand side of the machine there. You, know, so you gotta reach back there to get that. And I learned a trick. You know, and it's got this little plastic cover that goes over the control panel to help keep it clean. And I know the first model that I had Boy, that thing only lasted about a day, and one of the little hinges broke, just snapped right off. And I learned a trick the other day. When you open this thing, if you put your fingers right up here on the, on the hinge and just kind of pull forward on it, just kind of pull it forward just, just a little, and it slips right up and holds in place. When you go to close it, if you put your finger under it and just pull, just pull towards you just a little, and it will slide right around that little catch on the backside. If you just try to force it up, that's why they break. You know, so just pull that forward a little bit and it pops right into place. Pull it forward again and it drops right down. No click, no snap. You're not putting any strain on that little plastic hinge right there. So Kevin, what's the advantage of AC frequency? What's the benefit of being able to adjust it? Well, what the AC frequency does is it helps to define the arc itself. You, know, you, you, can, you can turn that frequency way down and the arc will get kind of broader. You can turn it way up and it will, it will literally just kind of force it into a more tight cone, you know, a tighter flame, if you will. I've got a little piece of aluminum here. Let me just set it up. We'll go to some low amperage, you know, so I'm not gonna like blow a hole through it. And I'll just light an arc and you can come close and take a look at it. And then I'll just adjust the AC frequency. Just hold still, hold the arc, turn the frequency up and down, and you can see, you'll be able to watch it. You'll be able to hear the difference in what it sounds like. So you get your glasses, I'll get my helmet, and we'll have a little fun. So this is it at 40 hertz. And I'll watch what happens when I turn it up. And that's 200 hertz right there. And you can see how it's real clean, it's real you know, defined. But if I turn it all the way back down again, you 
there you can see it kind of sputtering. And it, it's a much broader uh, arc at the bottom where it's touching the metal. So 40 hertz and back to 200 again. So you can see there with you know just 40 hertz, you know, all the way down at the bottom. It, it looks kind of, it looks like it's that big around. You know, the, instead of having this nice, you know, sharp point on the end of it, well, it's kind of soft. You know, which is great for, uh, you know, great for filling in, I guess. You know, it, it helps kind of wet the puddle out, you know, get the puddle to flow a little better. You know, but if you're working on a really, really tight joint, or you're working on, you know, thicker aluminum, I at least would turn up the frequency. Turn that up a little bit more. Narrow that point down a little more. Get you a little better penetration out of it. And it also gives you, a, it, you know, it also gives you a little better control of the arc when you're you know, like working in a corner or you're going to start going up on a joint or something like that. Just gives you a little bit better control. It gives a little more defined, you know, definition to it. it. Makes things a little cleaner. You know, it makes it work a little better. I'm still learning. I'm still playing with it. You know, I'm still having fun with it. But you know, those are the kinds of things I've been seeing. You want that finer point? Crank it up a little bit. So what's this puppy cost? Right about eight hundred dollars plus shipping. So you know, it's jumped about fifty bucks from the second generation to the third generation, and that gives you the AC frequency inside there and a little better hardware inside. So nice unit. Really, really, really nice unit. You know, it's a pleasure to work with. So if you're a beginning TIG welder, you know, or you want to get into TIG welding, what a great little thing to keep in mind is that machine right there. You know, a great entry level machine, you know, for the hobbyist, for the, you know, the, the first time learner. Uh, runs on 220 or 110. Now, of course, you'll lose a little amperage. It'll drop from 200 amps down to about 125, I think it is, when you plug it into 110. But it sits here and runs on a 20 amp circuit, you know, 20 amp wall plug all day long at 110 volts. So, you know, great thing to keep in mind. And oh yeah, Christmas is coming. Don't forget that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to play with this some more. We'll see you all next time. Wow, a college question. Oh boy. <laughs>